So first of all, I need to say so sorry for my poor voice today. So somehow, you know, I don't know the reason, but uh, I've lost my voice, my beautiful voice, <laughs> since last night. So, you know, like I said in the in the girls' session, um, my real voice is actually much, you know, more beautiful <laughs> than you know the, my current voice. So sorry about that. So by the way, I'm Chika from Janog. I'm a woman of the member of members of steering committee of Janog. So you know, as you know, this is a NOG update session, which is focusing on talking about what network operators group are like in mostly AP region. So today, I think we have, oh, my voice is really, oh, I sound exhausted, so sorry. Uh, today we have eight NOGs from different countries and area in AP region. So. Uh, let me introduce a little bit. Uh, ID Nog, Holly John from ID Nog. Okay, he's here. And Kabil from Sanog. Is Kabil from Sanog here? Okay, thank you. And Papu from BD Nog. Yeah, he is Papu. And Jonathan from My Nog. Okay. And John from Pack Nog. Is there John from Pack Nog here? No. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, we might be skipping Packnog today. And Dean will be coming here, I'm sure, uh, from NZNog. And Ji Chang from BT Nog. Is he here today? Nope. So I hope he will be coming soon. And Sei Ichi from Janog. He is a chairperson of Janog. So let's get started. So. Uh, each presenter can bring uh, <coughs> so sorry, their own laptop to here. So first, ID Nog, so Harry Janter. Thank you. Hello, uh, good afternoon everybody. I'm Harijanto from Indonesia. I want to uh, present about the IDNOC activity update. This is the, our first IDNOC in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, we just uh, have one day conference without workshop. Uh, 200 people attend our uh, IDNOC event from the ISP and education uh, person. The speaker is 50% from local, 50% from overseas. Um, other organization representative from EPNIC, from GENOC, from MAYANOC, SGNOC was uh, come to our first IDNOC. This is the documentation uh, for our first ID knock. 
and uh, for the second adenoc will be uh, will be uh, running on 8 to 12 June 2015. If you have time, you can come to Jakarta. Um, so we plan to have uh, some workshop and 12 conference. I'll be there as attendees or maybe speaker or maybe uh, our, as sponsor. So this is our uh, resources, you can visit our website. You can, uh, this is our mailing list, Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, the, the committee is, uh, this is the name of the committee. I'm the wa uh, one of a uh, committee. Our is my ISP brand name in Indonesia. Uh, if you need to contact, you can email to committer at idnoc.org.id. Okay, just this is a short presentation I uh, introduced. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, <coughs> so sorry. Well, do you have any comments, questions to idnoc Harijanto? So I might be missing, but uh, what language do you use in the conference? Uh, in the conference, uh, we, ha we use English and Indonesia. Okay, so both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the speaker? Yes. Uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, don't you have any comments or questions? Nope. Okay, thank you, Harijanto. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so next. Kabil from Sanok, Hi, this is GZ Kabir uh, from Sanok, representing Sanok. Um, this is who we are, South Asian Net Network Operators Group. We uh, represent some of the countries of um, South Asia, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. These are the constitutions uh, from where we gather together to every single event. Uh, though Maldive, the presence of Maldives is very rare. So uh, let us look back and uh, see how Sanog was formed. It was formed uh, back in 2003, January, uh, a, as a smaller version of Apricot uh, in Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, with CAN IT conference, ICT conference of Nepal. And uh, from uh, the first day, um, three workshops simultaneously with uh, 12 to 16 tutorials and two days conference, uh, this is the format. So we started our uh, NOG with uh, close cooperation with APNIC and uh, close cooperation with most of the Africa speakers around the world. and. Um, the main one, uh, main aim was to foster people networking and operational best practices in the region. Uh, actually, the uh, main motto was to get engineering folks get together and share their knowledges. Uh, Sanog gave them a platform to allow uh, to allow all, all the engineers from service providers, telcos, banks, and many corporate to exchange their knowledge. And this is so far uh, the countries hosting Sanog for last 11 years. Now uh, we hosted 25th event of Sanog 
and Bangladesh hosted four, Bhutan three, India seven, Nepal four, Pakistan three, and Sri Lanka four. But most important of all was Sanog four back in 2004 in Kathmandu, Nepal, where we started individually as an independent event um, with three workshops. Um, NSRC mostly collaborated uh, at that time, and they started working with us. Uh, there was, of course, MOU with EPINIC, APIA, and a new website was formed, and uh, a proper committee uh, was formed at that time. Uh, other, than, other than the Sanog 4-1, we have some milestones where we experience uh, the real glory of Sanog. Uh, mostly, uh, I mentioned about Sanog 4. There was Sanog 15, which was supposed to be in Sri Lanka, but uh, uh, it couldn't be there because of the turmoil of uh, uh, political situation. And in fifth, um, 45, I think, I think 40 days notice, we hosted that event in Bangladesh. And that was one of the craziest moment we passed. And after that, Sanog 21 was our celebration for 10 years of network, networking excellence. And we celebrated that in a grand fashion. And... Uh, the last one, which is a milestone we consider, is the 2013 Sanog 22 in Mumbai, where we started to um, go to India every year in every summer. And uh, the winter sessions are in different parts of South Asian countries. I mean, I mean other than India, we moved to um, all the other countries in winter and in summer, no, from 2013, we go to India. This is a glimpse uh, of the celebration of 10 years in Cox's Bazaar, the seashore of Bangladesh, the longest sea beach, natural sea beach you can find there. And you can see at the right top corner, Vinsav gave us a... Uh, warm message and the, you know Vinsav, uh, one of our grandpas of modern day internet. And you can see if, uh, Paul, the director general of APNIC was there to uh, give us keynote speech and some of the glimpse of, of the networking people enjoying that moment. So the update uh, comprises of uh, mainly last two Sanog events, one was in uh, 2014, the Sanog 24 event, which held in uh, Delhi, India. And uh, it was clubbed with YIGF, Youth Internet Governance Forum, and Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, APRIGF. And uh, the keynote speaker was our beloved Maz. He was trying to find his path over there. And uh, Mr. Udit Meherotra from Citicom also gave us some valuable information uh, as keynote speech. Uh, papers, we uh, addressed 17 total, 17 papers uh, during two days conference. Uh, that included EPNIC, NOG, IXS, SARTS update. We had two days tutorial with 12 topics discussed with full audience. And we had workshop, uh, the usual uh, workshops from, uh, from the recognized uh, instructors around the world, especially from APNIC, NSRC, and some of us over there. And uh, IPv4, V6 routing, MPLS network security um, was discussed. Total number of audience, 247. Uh, including 40 delegates uh, around, around the world. Total fellowship, particip we, we offer fellowship and six fellow, fellows were there. And 13 ladies 
uh, enchanted the total audience uh, as a participant, of course. Total uh, local sponsors were two, but international uh, usual sponsors were seven. And these are some of the glimpses. You can see uh, our founding chair, Gaurav, delivering a speech among the distinguished personnel of India. Mars was founding PATH. Some of the participants uh, in front of the venue. So this was Sanok 24 and uh, Sanok 25, the recent one, which was held in Kandy, Sri Lanka, was hosted by LARN and ITC, University of Peridania, Kandy, uh, ISOC ION 2015, Sri Lanka, was co-located with Sanok this time. The keynote speech was delivered by Honorable Professor Gihan Diaz. So far, again, 16 papers addressed uh, in this event in the conference, today's conference, uh, that included APNIC, NOx, IXS, and SARS updates, nine tutorial topics discussed, workshop, something new. This time, uh, as per the request of the local host, we introduced IP telephony and VOIP workshop. We introduced virtualization and cloud, and also the network security. Again, total number of on-site delegates was 152. Uh, foreign delegates were uh, 45. Economies, we found there are 14, and total fellow, uh, six fellow uh, fellowship was given or given. And it started with a, a, a ritual, uh, well lamp lighting ceremony. Uh, this is Professor Gihan Diaz uh, giving us his keynote speech and uh, one glimpse of the workshop. So uh, this is about uh, Sanog update. And now I like to have this opportunity to thank some of the peoples uh, in front of the great audience. Uh, certainly it's Gaurab um, for whom we are here today celebrating 25th event. Dr. Philip Smith, Shumon, and Ji Chen was there all the way to help him and help us. Of course, Norbu is our current chairman. And not only that, Kutis uh, and Ned Nod were with us and still with us uh, from the very beginning. Epinik, uh, many names to mention, Paul, Sunny, Sanjay, Nurul, NSRC, they are always with, our, uh, with us as the good friends, um, giving us the most potential instructors around the world. Steve, to, uh, to be mentioned first, Steve Hooter, Harvey, we miss you, man. He has been sick for a while. Phil, Andy, we have John here. Uh, I can survey, champ, champ moved from Epinic, Isaac. Mirjam, Karen, Raj, Chris, Isaac, Joe, uh, Joe Abley, uh, of course, was uh, among the first who um, helped us to form Sanog. Paul Vixi, Peter Losher. By the way, I ISC is hosting our Sanog website. PCH, silent uh, friend, very silently they are helping us. Bill uh, is the man, Johnny, uh, we miss him as well. He is now in hibernation. All other speakers, participants, and sponsors, i like to thank you once again. And i like to take this opportunity to thank some of the hosts as well, like Computer Association of Nepal, University of Morutua, uh, Nepal Internet Exchange, ISP Association of India, ISP Association of Bangladesh, Bhutan Telecom, Network Society of Pakistan, LARN, uh, Sri Lanka Telecom, and uh, ITC, University of Peridania. Well, the numbers, uh, the figures showing at the, uh, at the races are the number of events they hosted. And i like to uh, invite you in our next um, event, which will be held uh, from uh, 3rd of August to 11th of August, 2015, 
in Mumbai, India, and you are most welcome. CFP will be published anytime. Be there with us. And thank you. We have a website, www.senup.org. You can find all our activities over there. We have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter page. What not? You just uh, uh, let us know here, info at senup.org, if you want to know anything further. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much. <laughs> well, do you? <laughs> oh, sorry. Do you guys have any comments, questions, requests to Sanog? Actually, I have one question. Sorry, yes. with my really poor voice. <laughs> well, as for Sanog, it's been over 10 years since yes. Sanog is established, was established. So I'm just wondering what's the key factor to, you know, to keep the community running for in over 10 years? Uh, it's pretty simple. We are uh, actually all from a region where we really like to know. So uh, wherever you go in South Asian um, countries, you will see people are really uh, up to know more and more and more. So we have always one urge uh, to make events successful, uh, taking help from all the uh, friend organizations, uh, lending their instructors, sending their instructors. And not only that, we are very lucky Actually, we are very lucky to have uh, someone like Gorob, who is really a good organizer. Uh, a good organizer. We have uh, the current um, working committee, core com, um, program committee, fellowship committee. All are very active and vibrant in our um, working groups. So, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. so whenever there is an event, uh, everybody is there to make it successful. Okay, so is there is they working for Sanog as voluntary basis? Definitely voluntary basis. Okay. Everyone. Gotcha. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> fantastic indeed. Okay, thank you so much, Kabil. <laughs> so the next is Papu from BDNOG. Good evening, everyone. So uh, my name is Fokrul. I am from Bidinog. So if you heard some other names like Papu or s something like that, it's me. So we have multiple names in this region. So yeah, I'm the current secretariat for the Bidinog. So I'll, I'll give you an update uh, about the Bidinog, what we have done for last one and a half year. Uh, to a little background of Bidinog. So we are the Bangladesh Network Operators Group for the other Nog. And our main focus for the computer professionals who are basically working in Bangladesh, it might be from ISPs, telcos, universities, and individuals who have passions to work in this networking group and they like to build their career maybe, or they have a huge potentiality to work in this uh, group. So all of them are part of our BDNOG. And uh, uh, it's a forum where we work together. We share our operational experience. We try to do our operational research and the most important is we try to promote our local talents in the international uh, community, yeah, maybe in San Jose and Apricot, uh, like that. And we work in a volunteer basis for not-for-profit, and um, uh, all the members are, uh, uh, have some other day jobs, but they are doing BDNOG all for on a volunteer basis. So uh, as the earlier presenter, Kobe, uh, uh, talked about San Jose, so um, that's why because we have Sanog in the Southeast region, then why BDNOG? Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, there are some issues which local to us, so uh, maybe our country specific. And uh, we 
we speak in Bangla, so uh, in some other languages. So people feel more comfortable on their own languages. So there is one more region, reason to be have a BD Nog. Uh, <laughs> second is uh, we are very passionate, and uh, 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 Seno comes after like four or five uh, five, five years. We have to wait for Senok to host in Bangladesh. So, uh, but we see more potentiality of uh, having NOG in every year so that we can share those experience uh, among our community. Uh, and we need a platform where we can share uh, because uh, Bangladesh is like a highly dense uh, population, roughly 160 million people, but uh, people quite introverts. So we need to have some platform in our own, where can people come and share those experiences? And uh, yeah, most important, uh, we need to find out those local talents whom can we promote and send uh, uh, and utilize for our own, own betterment. Uh, our website is uh, bdnog.org, so we are uh, maintaining it in our own language and in, in English also, so it's bilingual. So uh, if you go to www.bdnog.org, uh, we try to post all our activities um, um, in the BDNOG, uh, our website. We have a strong mailing list, uh, info at nog at bdnog.org. So it's open for all, so uh, you can subscribe. And right now, I think we have roughly uh, 600 plus um, user individuals who are subscribed to this mailing list. And we discuss about our uh, internal issues, uh, NOG issues in the mailing list. So if you are interested, you can go to our website, subscribe to our mailing list, and you can uh, get all the archives from the mailing list also. So after having our BD NOG in, in back in 2013, in no, late November, we, we organized our first BD NOG in uh, one in uh, May 2014. And from May 23, 23rd, uh, along with uh, EPINIC regional meeting. So we have a three-day workshop in free track, we have a, a security track, a routing track, and virtualization track. Uh, we have one day uh, tutorial, uh, one day BDNO conference, and one day EPINIC regional meeting. And we got a huge participants in our conference, roughly 200 plus in conference, and 120 plus in the EPINIC regional uh, ARM conference. Uh, and we have roughly 86 people in our workshop, and uh, these are the few of the screenshots I like to share with you. Is uh, you you'll find out some of the familiar face out here somewhere in the here. So Philip, Jam, Ali, Nurul, me, Ziad Bhai. So there are so, some others people. Yeah, there's a small part. Uh, these are the participants uh, from the workshop, and we organize in one of the universities uh, uh, in Dhaka. These are the few screenshots for the um, uh, our opening plenary and uh, the. Uh, the meeting we had. So the first one is, uh, I think, is the opening plenary. We have uh, Shuman Bhai on the left uh, with the uh, chair of our trustee, Gorob uh, Quake from ICANN, and we have two ministers. And these are the like women in ICT. We have IGF and we have Paul and Quake and f like few of our um, uh, from our country. Uh, we have uh, Brian from NSRC, who is like uh, having a huge uh, popularity in BD and running those VM and other kind of stuff. So, and he is very active in our mailing list also. So after having a first very successful event of BDNOG 1, we moved to BDNOG 2, which we organized in November 2014. So we organize two events per year. So May 1 is more a kind of international one. We, we bring international people, we talk, uh, it's kind of a more international conference. We do conference tutorial workshop. The November one is more on a regional one. We move across our country. The, the second one we have done in Cox's Bazaar in November 11. So uh, we have two tracks there, MPLS and DNSSEC. Uh, one day, is a four day workshop and one day uh, tutorial and one day conference. Uh, and we have, a. Uh, uh, 91 participants in the conference and 51 to 50 participants for the workshop and tutorial. Yeah, I think it's, it can't take load of all the nogs. Yeah, so we have a, a 
if you look at these, we have a roughly 48 people who is from ISPs, but we have a good chunk of people from others. So what are those others? Those are the students who are uh, very uh, initial stage of their career. So those are the people also participate in our log, and we have a mixed audience, which we think uh, better collaboration. So these are the few, uh, and in BD Nocto, we uh, the very first time we have uh, broadcast our uh, uh, full conference in Google Hangout. So it's still in the archive. So if you want, you can go and check it out. We have some uh, good coverage in our local media also uh, regarding what we are doing uh, uh, for as a NOG. So this is a uh, picture from the participants. So in Cox's Bazaar Long Beach Hotel, and. Uh, there are a few more. So the middle one is very interesting for me. So is a is a is a. Uh, if you look at it, we have a router as a plate, chili as and connectivity, lemon as and switch. So we are basically discussing about interview and routing issue, and while we are having dinner. So that shows how passionate we are for the networking, right? So we can't we can't make ourselves out of those nog and networking issues. So we discuss. We don't have any pen and paper. So we use chilies and on your and plate for uh, to to draw the topology and there's a few other screenshots so yeah it's very very active and uh, vibrant uh, the next BDNOG we're going to have is uh, BDNOG 3 in Dhaka from May 18th uh, roughly we plan to have three track we are finding out in BDNOG 1 we have done a three day workshop BDNOG 4 two day, four day workshop so we are basically trying to find out whether three days four days which is might suitable for us. So we are, we are trying to do have a four days workshop on advanced BGP, Linux system admin, and IP telephony, three tracks, and one day tutorial, one day conference. So uh, CFP is open now. If you go to bdnog.org, you'll find it out and can submit if you're interested. I request you to submit a CFP and get registered. Uh, there's a BDNOC 3. We are, we are very, very good in uh, planning. So we have planned for the BDNOC 4 also. So we are going to do it in CLET. Is the other part of Dhaka is uh, uh, Bangladesh, and uh, uh, you can book your uh, calendar right now. We are going to have BDNOC 4 conference in Silet in November 11, uh, and workshop from 12 to 15, and planning to have two workshop uh, uh, during BDNOC 4. Uh, we are very active in cloud or web, so we have Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, YouTube, name whatever you want. So go and grab all those, and you get all those images. Uh, even details and even the YouTube videos where we broadcast the whole uh, 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 BDNOC2 conference. So that's all from my side. Thank you for having your patience and listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Papu. Well, if you have any questions, comments to Papu, uh, please come to the microphone. Nope. So sad. So actually, I have one question. <laughs> Well, you know, you mentioned earlier that people have worked for BDNOG as voluntary basis as well as SANOG. So just wondering what's their motivations to work for in BDNOG as voluntary basis? Yeah, I think the motivation is the chili and the and the onion and the and the lemon we have in the dinner. Okay, so <laughs> so we are very passionate, <laughs> passionate about all those stuff and, and yeah, because in 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 BD, like uh, we have some uh, uh, um, uh, people who are very active in Sanog, like Kabir Bhai, Shuman Bhai. We we follow. Uh, we know like Goro for a lot of. Uh, we have Roman Bhai from Apinik. So those are the guys who motivate us because they're very active in Sanog and Apricor. So uh, we see how how those nogs are working, and those things uh, motivate uh, the young we have, uh, and uh, they think they need to do something like that. Okay, sounds good. So, you know, in a way, people are, uh, in a way, in a good way, emotionally attached to the NOG, right? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Operate. because we, we, for Bangladesh, are very popular for emotion. So, yeah, so everything we do is uh, very emotionally we do, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Papu. So please give, me ha give him a hand. <laughs> okay, next is Jonathan from my NOG.
Hi, uh, I'm Jonathan from Minoc. Uh, so just an update from Minoc here. Uh, we, uh, we had we ran Minoc four workshops uh, in Kuala Lumpur recent uh, last year, and we ran the IPv4 and IPv6 workshops and the network security workshops uh, with the help of APNIX team. Okay, uh, we ran the workshop for three days and. We, after that, we have a one-day uh, conference. So the next Minoc event is on the 17th to the 20th of August. It's just after SG Nog. So <coughs> mark your dates if you're around that area. Uh, so we 17 to the 18th of uh, 17 to the 19th of August, we are having the workshops, and 20th of August, we are doing the conference. So just subscribe to our mailing list and like our Facebook page. You can contact me or the committee. This is our contacts. Thank you. Well, do you have any comments, questions? Yeah, Jonathan from Minoc. Yep. Sorry, um, Jonathan, I didn't catch the part about uh, colliding with uh, SG Nog. Is it the conference day? Yours, uh, Minoc is on Thursday, and SG Nog is on a different day, or is it on the same days? Can you share your name and where you are? Uh, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, Seichi from Jadong. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, SG Nog's uh, conference will be on the 18th, I think. So after that, then they will do their workshops after that. So we will have our conference on the 20th. So is there any questions? Nope. Okay, thank you so much, Jonathan. So next is actually the order is John from Packnock, but okay. No, he's then. Ah, okay, gotcha. I'm John support for it. So you are talking about Pacnog? No, John support. Ah, okay, gotcha. Then I'm going to Is there a PFS in the audience? There isn't. There is. Philip, what year did PACNOG start in? And what was the event that kicked it off? <laughs> I'll just repeat it if you shout it out to me. PACNOG started in 2005 in Fiji. There was an APNIC meeting member in Fiji the year before, and there was a workshop at it. And as a result, next year, PACNOG was created. And since then, there have been two PACNOGs a year. So this last year, we had two PACNOGs. And the first was in Vanuatu, in Port Vila. And uh, it was hosted by the office of the government CIO of Vanuatu. Uh, there was a half a day of conference sessions. There was a four and a half day long workshop on BGP routing led by Philip Smith, I think. There was a uh, four and a half day long workshop on network and system security led by Dean Pemberton and assisted by me. And there was an introduction to MPLS VPNs run by APNIC, and I believe it was Champika. Do we see Champika here? Anyway, was it led by you? <gasps> was it Narul? Yes, sorry about that. Okay, so that was uh, PACNOG 15 in Vanuatu. Uh, we, the half day um, conference had papers. Uh, we had an APNIC and ICANN update. We had a presentation from Philip Smith on RIPE Atlas. 
uh, we had a couple of different talks about the establishment of the Vanuatu Internet Exchange, which is the first internet exchange in the South Pacific, uh, sort of in the whole Pacific outside of Hawaii and Guam. So development of the Vanuatu Internet Exchange and uh, Google donated a cache there. So there's a separate talk on the Google cache and how that brought all of the ISPs in Vanuatu to peer at the exchange. Uh, there was an MPLS case study from Telecom Fiji. They um, gave an interesting explanation of how they've moved their core network to MPLS. Uh, and in fact, they're running mobile services through MPLS tunnels across their network. Uh, there was a very interesting talk from Blue Sky in Samoa about IPTV. So they are running IPTV over their wireless broadband network. Um, and uh, it is a very, very popular service. And there was another talk from Telecom Fiji about Wi-Fi services and how they're integrating Wi-Fi into their telecom offerings. So this is our um, uh, class for network monitoring and management, uh, sorry for security network security in uh, Vanuatu. And in fact, um, I must have cut off about 10 people on either side. Uh, it was quite a, um, yeah, it was a huge amount of people, um, but we really, really had a lot of fun. So moving on to PACNOG 16 in the Solomon Islands. This was in December and it was in Honiara. Oh, I should go back because there's some important things I missed about this. Uh, our favorite beer in uh, Vanuatu was Vanuatu Bitter, which is VB. And uh, I think between Dean and I, we had 24. Um, right. Yeah, a five, five, five hour period, yeah, something like that. So moving on to uh, Pacnog 16 in the Solomon Islands, uh, where we enjoyed Soul Brew, um, although that would have been Mike Yeager and I and not Dean because he abandoned us. Um, December 2014, hosted by our telecom in the Solomons. Uh, there was a half day of conference sessions again. This is how we run Pacnog. Uh, there was a four and a half day long workshop on BGP routing run by Philip Smith. And there was a network monitoring and management workshop run by me, assisted by Mike Jager. We um, had the normal APNIC and ICANN uh, updates. Um, APNIC updates come from Ellie and uh, ICANN updates come from Save. So this is how PACNOG works. We had another presentation on RIPE Atlas from Philip Smith. And then we had a talk from Telecom Solomons about their ADSL deployment in remote islands, um, all backhauled with geostationary satellite back to the main island. Um, we had a talk from Marshall Islands about their new IP services. They've got a fiber backbone now on the main island and some wireless links tying together into a ring. Uh, we had a talk about the University of South Pacific um, and USP is actually going to build a new campus in Vanuatu, and so they've got a design for their new campus network and how things tie together. Uh, and we had an update on peering and internet exchange providers. This is our crew at um, PACNOG 16 in Port Vila, and it was a beautiful, beautiful time to be out there. And uh, yeah, I can't even count how many um, soul brews we had, uh, but... Um, the next one is going to be in Samoa. Yay, Samoa. Samoa is a, um, a hotbed of discussion in the Pacific because uh, the regulator and a number of ISPs are discussing putting together another peering exchange. So we're going to host PACNOG 17 together with some meetings on this peering exchange. And uh, it'll be hosted by the Samoan regulator. It'll start on what, Dean, the 13th of uh, July? Yeah, and uh, a bunch of us will be coming from uh, Internet New Zealand's NetHui in New Zealand, uh, finishing that up and headed to Samoa directly afterwards. Uh, we'll have a half day of conference sessions, and if you are involved in networking in the Pacific or you have something useful to contribute, please put a paper in. Uh, we'd love to have a relevant paper. Uh, it's great hearing what the, the networks out there are doing, um, and uh, 
everything else beyond that is to be determined. Um, we may come up with a wireless workshop. Uh, we'll probably fill up BGP again or something else. Yeah, I don't know. Philip likes doing routing and people like studying routing with Philip, so it's a very good fit. Uh, and that is it. So if you have any questions about PACNOG, uh, you can get a hold of me or you can get a hold of Dean or you can get a hold of Philip. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? No? All right, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Actually, I have one question. <laughs> Can I ask something? Sure, go right ahead. Well, actually, PACNOG has covered a really huge, a huge area in AP region. That's right. So just wondering, don't you have any you know, first language barrier or any culture barrier to operate PACNOG? There are some very interesting cultural issues throughout the Pacific. Um, and uh, there are several, several distinct cultures. So this last two were in Melanesian cultures. Um, in Vanuatu, it was quite a religious culture, and we had lots of people um, who were Seventh-day Adventists, so they didn't work on Saturday, but they did work on Sunday. Uh, we didn't have um, uh, such a religious environment in the Solomons, but um, certainly in Tonga, we had the day off for the king's birthday, and all of the stores were closed on uh, Sunday. Oh. Nothing is open on Sundays. We did have a huge parade for the king's birthday, and we got to watch a, his review of the military, where the military all dressed up in beautiful uniforms and had bands playing, and he stood in a jeep as it drove by very slowly so he could inspect all of the soldiers. Yeah, quite interesting. Oh, yeah, very interesting. So and how do we manage that? Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, some difficulties with people getting around. Uh, for example, this last one, um, our colleague from the Marshall Islands, had to fly from the Marshalls to Guam, to Hawaii, to Brisbane, to Honiara, because of a disagreement between the governments of Fiji and the Solomons, there are no planes flying between the two countries now. Oh. So the only way to get uh, uh, to the Solomon Islands now is Brisbane or Papua New Guinea. Um, so, or, or Vanuatu on a very small propeller plane. So yes, there are some real challenges working in the Pacific and the conference moves into different parts of the Pacific so that we bring other people in. When we go to Samoa, we'll see people coming by boat from some of the smaller oh, islands. Uh, I don't <laughs> no, know if they're gonna be swimming, but um, we, we will still see people from different parts of the Pacific at every different PACNOG meeting. Okay, very interesting. Thank you for sharing that Thank story. You. Thank you so much. So next, uh, Dan from NZNOG. Hello. I'm not John Brewer, but I know where he lives. Okay, we'll get this. Okay, so I'll, I'll be giving a bit of a, a very brief update about NZNOG, and we'll find out why it's brief in just a minute. So here we go. All right, NZNOG. So what's been happening with NZNOG? Well, NZNOG's been going now for 13, 14 years, and pre pretty much we're on a bit of a roll now. So they, the conferences happen once a year. They happen all around New Zealand. So, yeah, pretty much everything is awesome. You know, the NZNOG 2015 was in Rotorua, New Zealand, had over 9,000 participants. Okay, well, it actually had about 130 to 150 participants. Um, and here they are. So you'll be able to pick a couple of us out of that photo, but it was, it's a very good, it's a very good week. We, um, the, the format for NZNOG has, has been the same over um, a long time now. We run over a week. And we have the first three days are for workshops. So in the past, we've had Philip Smith, and we've had a lot of wireless interest. Um, on the Wednesday, though, the last day of the workshops, we, all, we also run half-day tutorials. So if there's something that the industry is interested in that doesn't quite fit into a workshop, but a little bit longer than a session, then we put it in, into those tutorial days. And then for the Thursday and the Friday, we um, we, we just have back-to-back -back, um, technical 
presentations. We only run a single track. We have thought in the past about running dual track, but the feedback we've got is that everyone is interested in everything. So the minute we start going to dual track, there'll be too much, you know, um, too much conflict of what people want to go to. So, yeah, there we go. We run a mailing list, um, nznog at list.waikato.ac.nz. And, um, yeah, I, I want to just give, you know, a bit, more of a, a bit more of a message. This is a very serious message. So I used a serious cat. Because the internet's all about cats, right? And we haven't had enough cats this week. So um, I thought I'd use this session to give a serious message, but also to get some more cats into an internet conference. Come on, guys, seriously, more presentations about cats. So the serious message I have from NZNOG is that there will be no NZNOG next year. Oh, cat is very sad. But don't worry. Instead, we'll be having Apricot 2016. Yeah! So, so NZNOG runs in the last usable week of January. In fact, I've already, um, I've already calculated the dates for NZNOG for the next 100 years and posted them to the NZNOG mailing list. So for those of you who like to book your travel ahead, I can do you 100 years worth of NZNOG, that's fine. But the last week of January is very close to um, Apricot in the, um, in the middle of February, and it's going to be about the same people. Okay, so we're going to want the same people to get leave from work and come to NZNOG, and then we're going to ask them to go back to work for three days and then come away again. So we thought, well, there's not really much point. So what, so what we're going to do is kind of roll the same, sort of, the same sort of good sessions and the same sort of people and the same sort of sponsors that would normally be doing NZNOG in January, and we're going to kind of roll it into Apricot. So those of you that have heard good things about NZNOG, this is where that, where that same kind of feeling is going to be. You know. And then NZNOG will return in 2017, and that makes the cat very, very happy. So thank you very much. That's the NZNOG update, and I'll see you all in Auckland next year. Thank you so much, Ben. Do you have any questions, comments, requests to NZNOG to them? Cool. Okay, thank you so much, Dan. Well, next is Chichan from BT Nog. Chichan, do you have your own laptop? Or do you, you don't have any slides? Gotcha. That's fine. Actually, oh, this, is my, this is my fault, so I should have downloaded his slides to my laptop, so sorry. So let me change the order. So next is uh, Kam Fian and Eric Fan from HKNAG, so please welcome. Hello, everyone. So uh, my name is uh, Kem Xiong, and um, next to me is uh, Eric Fan. So uh, we are from Hong Kong. Uh, so today we are going to talk about um, introduce our uh, Hong Kong neighborhood group. So I think this is the first time that uh, Hong Kong not present in the um, Abigod. So today um, we are going to talk about um, some little history, um, how we formed the birth of uh, Hong Kong NOC, and then we're going to talk about um, 
how we organize the volunteers. Uh, and then we're going to um, introduce us. Uh, we have actually have three events in the past. So we're going to highlight some of the um, um, conference that we have. And the last, we're going to um, look forward um, what we're going to do next. So um, the Hong Kong law, we actually start with a group of volunteers. So these were volunteers that we actually all participate, uh, or most uh, we participate from the um, RP called APEN in 2011. So we are part of the volunteer for the infrastructure at that time in um, Hong Kong. So, um, and then uh, what we want to do is, uh, I think some as most of the knock that um, here, we want to promote the uh, internet technology to the Hong Kong local operators and also um, share all the best operational practice among the um, internet communities. And uh, we start with um, our first event, we start in um, 2nd of September in 2013, so that's um, two years back, um, a co-host with the um, APNIC um, meeting. So here's the um, members that, uh, volunteers that we have. So we have um, Eric Fan who's standing next to me, and uh, YK, um, I think some of you probably know, uh, and Chi Ho is actually here sitting in the front row, and uh, Kem C is me, and we have Rafael, I think, again, uh, most of you um, know him, um, he's one of the um, uh, AP, uh, IA uh, board member, and then uh, we have Howard, um, uh, who is also a very um, long term internet um, uh, people. And then two people that is not so in the photos is um, another um, from Welfare Jung and also Chris Dong, they are from the local operator and the uh, vendor side. So um, we have been having three events in the past that the first very beginning we call HK NOC um, 0.1. Uh, we call zero point one because um, it is a half day event, so we want to make our full day event with like one point zero, two point zero, with a full day event, and then with zero point one, zero point two, etc. For a half day event, so you will see all our numbering system um, is slightly so. The very beginning we have the zero point one, so <coughs> uh, it's in September two thousand and thirteen, and it's together with the APNIC uh, meeting. So we um, share the same um, the conference room, and then APNIC have the trainer. They have a half day, and then um, Hong Kong have the another half day. So we have, I think it's actually quite good that in the first time that we actually have 96 people show up, uh, because we don't have much like, um, uh, so it's all by our like a word of mouth, and then we just by fans, inviting fans, because we don't have a formal like mailing list or, or like a um, social system at the time. So, um, so we talk about like, um, we have uh, APNIC people, we talk about the APNIC update, uh, who is IRR, and then we talk about the peering landscape in Hong Kong. We talk about CDN and also some um, peering control. This is in the uh, zero point one. And then the next event we have is in um, April 14, 2014, that we have, um, again, it's a half day event. Uh, we are <coughs> have a support with the local operator, Hong Kong Broadband. It's true, they have a booth out there. Uh, uh, we have a also we have uh, over 19. So nine, over 90 people um, attending. So we have topics like uh, talk about the next generation network, um, to how the local operator deploying their um, new service. We have um, speaker who talk about the ISP and the cyber security. And we also have APNIC as a um, speaker who talk about the update and our KPI and um, other speaker talk about the DNS set. So from here, I pass it over to um, Eric Fan to talk about um, the Hong Kong Not One Porno and also um, the look forward that we have. So uh, nice to meet you all. And go back to Hong Kong Not One Point Zero. Uh, as Cam's mentioned, that is a full day event. Uh, we hold that uh, on 2014 September, the first of September. Yeah. Sorry, there's a, a big mistake. And, and uh, we are still discussing probably the Hong Kong Not 2.0. It was also organized at the same day of um, or 2015. So looking forward to that. And uh, this is the first um, full day event uh, in the North. Uh, we got uh, more than 100 participants. The specific number is 120. I think that is very encouraged to most of our volunteers. Uh, it is actually quite... Um, a very hard job for us because all of us have a very hard full-time job, and the event is uh, holding in a um, in a conference center in uh, Hong Kong Island. So we have a pleasure to um, to invite Geoff Hilson from APNIC to do the keynotes, and Tom from Calfrey to talk about the IPv6 security. 
Then um, also we have um, a vendor um, from uh, our boss, CF Choi, presenting the security reports, which uh, he also did the same reports presentation last uh, yesterday. Uh, we, for, we have quiz from ISO to talk about deploy 360. Then uh, also we have some topic like a very popular topic, SDN, security, and also the most um, famous and welcome topic in this is the submarine cable and the uh, optical network, which is uh, conducted by the ta Tata. Uh, the Tata, for the Tata, yes. Um, most of the uh, most of the participants feel very interesting in this topic. I'm not sure whether it's happening or not as well. So, looking forward to this, uh, we're going to organize our Hong Kong Not 1.1 on April. So we have to go back and work very hard for soon. And uh, we actually going for the paper right now, and we are looking forward to have more uh, collaboration with different law. So if you have any um, suggestion to us, you are feel free to talk to Kems and me, and also Chi Hu. Uh, again, we want to promote the best practice and and, and the knowledge to the uh, local, uh, to the operator in Hong Kong, and assist organization with common goal. Um, this is our email address and also our website www.hongkongnot.net. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Any question? <laughs> Can I ask about things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, actually, HKNUG is one of the really newest NUG in AP region, sounds like so. So just wondering, you know, you guys are going through really um, birth pains to establish a new NUG. So, uh, my curious, I'm just curious, what's the your biggest pain to establish a new NUG? So um, <laughs> I think the, the, I think all of the way that we have been, I mean, among the uh, internet community that we always discuss that we need a um, um, Hong Kong local operator network group. Uh, so I think the, we have the idea and then a lot of, so and then it's only like uh, when we have, a, I think it's really have a, idea and then we come up into reaction is that because um, uh, we have some, at that time we have a confirmed speaker and then he's trying to drive us to, hey, when are you going to have the first HK knock? And then um, I think it's um, some people who actually drive us to have the whole full event and then we try to arrange that and then, so this is um, the, at regional some motivation that pushed us because we all have the idea but then if we come out here, there's some confirmed speaker. He said, hey, if you have the one Hong Kong knock, then we will come to speak. So um, the help us to um, move to us to come into your reality. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and then you if so you come to Hong Kong Knock, then you can get a t-shirt okay. for Hong Kong Knock. Sounds great, <laughs> free of charge. We, we forget to mention this t-shirt. We have a very special uh, uh, logo at the back. And if you are the volunteer, we have a timestamp over here. So if you want to be a volunteer, we will give you the, it is free and a very nice uh, design. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Kams and Eric. The next is Seiichi from Janog. Everybody can see my slide. Nope, uh, sorry. Um, let me mirror. Voila. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Seichi from uh, Janog. Um, this will probably be my last time standing here doing something like this. Um, Currently, I'm serving as the chairperson of Janog, but uh, we'll have a meeting in July, and after that, I um, plan to um, step down from the role of chair and from the steering committee. Um, I've been on the steering committee for eight years. It's been really fun, but uh, it was. I decided it was time to do something new, and there's more and more um, exciting members coming into uh, the Janog steering committee, so it's time for uh, the younger generations to you know, have more fun than me. So, uh, update on Janog. Um, we've been around 18 years. Uh, it's been really fun. I've, as I mentioned, I've been on the steering committee for eight years. Um, before that, I was just um, I was a participant for a couple times. Um, 
it was founded back in 1997. Um, the, found, the, the first chairperson of uh, Geonog, you've probably seen his name before if you logged into a router. Um, you guys use uh, Quagga? Quagga? Zebra? Right? If you log in, you'll see that uh, copyright Ishiguro Kunihiro, that he was uh, the, the first chairperson of Geonog. And since then, we've built up membership. Currently, um, 7,000 plus mailing list members or addresses on the mailing list. Um, we have meetings twice a year, usually January and July. Uh, the last meeting we had was uh, in this um, January. The next one will be, uh, as I mentioned, July. I'll note on that later on. It's usually two days of plenary sessions, and we have half day of tutorials and boffs. So we usually have, on Wednesday, we would have tutorials or boffs. It, this all actually depends on um, where the venue is and how big the rooms are. So um, sometimes we, we might not be able to do such a thing, um, some, uh, most, but most time uh, we will be able to. It, tutorials, um, we actually talked about this in the NOG boff, but the tutorials are, uh, one of the things that was requested by the members, we only had plenary sessions, um, conference sessions, but um, the members, uh, we have open mic sessions uh, once a year, uh, usually in July. You know, we go up to the mics and say, okay, you guys, what do you, what do you want to talk about in Geonog? How, how do you want to do Geonog? And the members come to the mic and give new ideas, which is, it, it's always exciting. And one of the things that came up was, you know, we want tutorials because, you know, there are very, you know, bright people that come to Geonog and we want to learn from them. So we said, okay, so we'll start doing tutorials. And usually we have uh, DNS tutorials and uh, routing tutorials. Those are the most popular. Um, dep depending on time time, we may have MPLS tutorials. Um, it all depends on who can come and give the tutorials. So uh, the number of uh, attendees, we usually have um, 500 plus. Last time uh, in January, we had 550. Uh, when we have it in Tokyo, it's over 800, but it's very rare that we have uh, Janok meetings in Tokyo. Um, one of the reasons is, is that it's quite expensive to find a place to hold a meeting in Tokyo. And uh, unfortunately, um, oops, forgot to mention this. Uh, the language that we use in our conference is uh, the local Japanese language. We do have overseas speakers, and they, of course, present in English. And we ask the speakers to, you know, if they have colleagues who can kind of sort of mildly translate. They don't. It doesn't have to be professional translation. It just has to be a mild summary translation. It would be really nice. If not, we'll try to find someone from the staff members who is willing to help. Um, I've done it in the past. Um, some other people have done it in the past. Uh, Izumi-san from JP Nick has helped out quite well with that as well. So more about Genog. Um We have working groups. Um, sorry, it's kind of hard to see the white, white uh, letters. Uh, right now, there's an uh, NTP working group going on. It's almost about to close. It's uh, producing a document covering the reflection attacks that have been quite popular uh, these uh, past few years. Um, it should conclude in a few weeks. Uh, we, the working group produced the document and you know put it out to the mailing list for comments. Um, the working group chairs did a really good job of collecting the comments and feeding that back to the document. So the document will be available to the Janoc operators. They can go look at it, see you know what the reflection attacks are, what measures can be taken to mitigate them, that kind of stuff. We also had RPKI working groups in the past. Uh, that's concluded. And I think the, there was an announcement by JP Nick yesterday that they're starting an RPKI service, which is really cool. And we also have interim meetings. This is, this is just an experimental meeting that we began a few years ago. Um, we have this in Tokyo. It's a one-day meeting. It's not really a conference style. It's We go to the big companies who have big meeting rooms, like 100 people can fit in the seminar room. And we borrow it for about you know one one day. Um, we usually start in the afternoon and work on, uh, and do it till nighttime. It's quite experimental. Um, we don't really have hosts and sponsors. We just gather together and, you know, give presentations, lightning talks. And the reason why we start in the afternoon is because there's a lot of people that cannot um, 
come during the day and they can, after work, you know, 5.30, their company, you know, their job ends, they can come. So some, some it's f for people who can come after six, uh, it's kind of like bring your own beer and we'll kind of do lightning talk sessions. Um, this, this changes every year, it's once a year, but um, this year we're also gonna have it uh, in April, I think 17th. It's um, held in a language Japanese, um, so it's a very small room, so it, um, not many people can fit in. But uh, we do this because um, if you've been running Janog for 18 years, um, we, you know, it becomes more and more harder to do experimental stuff with the real meetings. You know, we have hosts, we have sponsors, and the the way that we do meetings is was getting you know to fixed, and we had this really success pattern that we were doing, but you know, um, maybe we could learn more. So we began an interim meeting doing you know, experimental stuff, and it's been fun. And we also um, have actually BCP documents that we've been doing for a long time. Um, we call it JANA comments documents. And these are technical documents uh, written by the JANOG members. And I realize there's a uh, BCOP, BCOP, um, documents that are beginning in the Nanog region, the ripe region. We're still um, trying to figure out, you know, the best way to collaborate with them. And this is an interesting picture. Um, one of the things that we began recently was that uh, we began to have uh, the staff members, that did, these are uh, the people wearing the uh, blue, uh, blue shirts. Um, Chika-san's wearing it today. Um, so the first, the newcomers, it's always a challenge for newcomers to come to a NOG, fit in, make friends. So we said, okay, let's have lunch together. And we started doing this a couple of years ago and it was a really big hit. Everybody loved it. Everybody wanted to have, you know, especially if you're coming alone and, you know, Janok doesn't serve lunch. They, it's on your own lunch style lunch. But these people, you know, they bring bento boxes. Um, this was actually done at a college. So this is a, uh, uh, cafeteria in a college, and we'd get together. Said, you know, if you want to have lunch with us and talk about internet, uh, you know, interesting internet stuff, let's have lunch here. And we, we, there would be like twenty or thirty people that would come and have lunch with us. And th the people that come to the lunch actually um, become volunteers. They get more ex um, interested in how Jana gets run, and and it's a way to make new friends. So a little bit more um, technical stuff. The recent discussion topics at Janog, uh, we've had a very interesting discussion on MVNO. Um, if you don't know what an MVNO is, it's a mobile virtual network operator. Um, it, there are MNOs, uh, the mobile operators, uh, use cell phones. The virtual ones are, they don't own the radio infrastructure, but they lease them and then provide uh, mobile services. And this has been becoming quite uh, popular in Japan. So there's a panel discussion about, you know, what's going on behind uh, MVNO services and um, the market uh, status, you know, what, what, what's the technical bit difference between an MNO and MVNO, it was quite fun. We also had an interesting discussion over PHP flow spec, why it's needed now. It's been, the RFC has been around for a long time, but people are starting to look at it. A lot of people are starting to look at it now um, because there's increasing, increasing DDoS attacks. But is it really easy to implement? Not really. Um, why? Uh, there's implementation differences that are quite big. You know, if you have a Juniper and Cisco, there's like quite a big difference between those. And that was discussed. It was, that was a really nice um, technical session. And also, there was an interesting discussion about uh, white box switches. These are, you know, uh, kind of like, they look like uh, just regular, you know, one use switches. It has a Broadcom chip, it doesn't have an operating system. You have to install the operating system on your own. And does it really have a future? Um, how, where can it be used? Is it really, you know, more cost effective than the uh, vendor switches? That was an interesting discussion. And also we, have a lot of talks about tools. Everybody loves tools. Uh, tools, I mean, software tools, but also hardware tools. What do you use to plug, you know, when, when you want to plug out, you know, fibers, and it's like a, four, you know, these days you can fit like more than like 48 ports on, on a one use switch, and when you try to pull it out, you kind of touch the other one, and you, 
that causes an outage. So there's um, everybody was sharing, you know, I use this to plug out the uh, XFPs, and it was, it's all, it was a really exciting thing. So automation, IPv6, routing, these are all topics of interest for the Genog uh, community. So um, one of the main challenges that we have is uh, language. Um, so we ask the speakers to speak in Japanese, either speak in Japanese or they can speak in English, and, but we'll have to somehow summarize and translate uh, some of that stuff uh, into Japanese. And recently, uh, AP Nick uh, has been really helping us uh, with the document translations. Um, this actually is the other way around, actually. Um, the Janog presentations are in uh, Japanese. So if you, you know, did a search on them, um, you can probably find it with the three-letter acronyms, but you really wouldn't know what it's saying. So we've taken a couple of documents that were of real big interest in the Janog community, um, translated some of them in, into English, and so if you're interested in that material, you can look at it and somewhat understand what it's um, trying to do. So I really, really, really would like to thank uh, AP Nick for uh, sponsoring this. And you know, I'm gonna skip this. Okay. <coughs> so um, tools we use today to uh, run Janoc, we've been actually doing a lot of changes with tools. You know, we first started with a static website. Then we went through various versions of wikis which we still sort of use. And we started using Confluence uh, by Atlassian. Uh, they gave us a community license, which was very kind of them. And this has been working for us. And we've been starting using uh, Concrete 5 for web content management. And for communications within the staff, uh, we have 12 student community members. And for each um, meeting, we have volunteers, about, I'd say, 30 volunteers uh, acting as program committee or local arrangements, et cetera. And you know, if we have more like 40 people working together to build a meeting, you know, we need a chat tool to you know, discuss information. So we started using uh, Slack and also uh, Chatwork, which is a Japanese uh, tool. We also use uh, Google Apps um, and some home run tools for surveys, et cetera. So next, Janog is um, July 15th through 17th. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, we're, you guys are here today, Fukuoka. And I just checked this on Google Map and it says 32 minutes on train. It's uh, Kita Kyushu City. Um, it's not so far on train. Uh, if you drive, it's uh, one hour and four minutes. Not so far. So if you liked Fukuoka, please come again um, in July. And uh, you can stop by, have ramen, and then come to Janog. So Janog is uh, completely run by volunteers, as um, I think all, most other um, NOGs are. What we've been focusing on really is more member involvement and engagement. So getting involved uh, as a volunteer staff, there's an internationalization team, um, there's working groups, you can give pr tutorials, presentations, lead a boff, host a meeting, sponsor it. Or um, some people sponsor resources. Uh, NTT PC has been providing this co-location space to host these uh, server uh, equipments. And um, the whole community has been really involved in helping us out. So uh, if you're here, yeah, I would really like to thank you guys. And that's it, okay. And well, some pictures at the end. And this is quite old, but uh, this is kind of what uh, Janog looks like when it's doing conferences. All right, so anybody have questions or comments? Sorry, it was a little bit long, but. Uh. Okay, no questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the presented, uh, presentation got lost in, and the backup which was on my laptop was, is in Apple shop, so I thought I'm going to speak. Thank you the, for the presentation. 
BTNOG uh, uh, Bhutan uh, Network Operators Group was formed last year. We had our first meeting in September, and uh, together with Philip, myself, Nobu, Ganga, and a few other uh, we all put in. And uh, we had our first knock at uh, OK, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we had our first knock uh, at Finsiling, the border town between the commercial capital of the country, uh, Finsiling. The College of Science and Technology, Royal University of Bhutan was the, I mean, is the, was the venue. The total program was for four days. Uh, we had one day conference and uh, three day, four days three track workshop. BGP uh, was taught by Philip Smith. Virtualization and cloud by Dean Hans and uh, network and system security by Randy, Mass and Cheryl from Epinic. On the conference, we had few other guests. And uh, close to 100 local participants from various, uh, we have uh, two mobile law operators, uh, one private one and one is us as a telco. Uh, we officially, we have uh, four, uh, five, four licensed ISPs. One is us, one is, uh, uh, the, there are three in operation. One has license, but uh, we have not seen their presence much. But rest are all IT folks from the various government, uh, private uh, in, uh, organization. So we had close to 100 uh, participants for the first knock. And the resources were, as I've said, it's from NRC, NSRC, APNIC, IAG, RUP, and uh, Patan Telecom. And uh, the second BT knock, uh, since it was quite good because it helped us, the whole objective was building the in-house capacity with assistance from our friends. So the second BT knock uh, we have scheduled sometime in September this year. The venue will be uh, the conference hall of the Royal University of Bhutan at Thimpu, the capital. The program day will be one day conference and two track workshops. Uh, one is introduction to routing and network security. And in case you're flying close by to Bhutan or you want to come to Bhutan, you're invited for the second BT knock. And thank you very much. Looks like this microphone is not working. Uh, well, actually, all the presentations for this session are done, so is there anyone who wants to talk about the NOG? I hope I'm not missing anyone this time. Looks like okay. Okay, so thank you so much for participating. And thank you so much <laughs> for the nine great presentation. Thank you.